Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee. Follow me, the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We have a special guest. She's a family to the room. That's Ms. right. Nina Turner, welcome back. Hey, DJ. Good to be here. Senator Angela. Nina Turner. <laughs> Senator Nina Turner. That is right. Yes. <laughs> and she's running. You're running for Congress right now. I am running. Well, t- tell us the importance of that. I feel like I've been campaigning for forever. You yeah. guys know. Yeah. Every time mm-hmm. I'm in. But the significance, you know, this this is a very important moment in our country's history. And to be able to have this opportunity, something that I didn't necessarily see coming in this moment. But the former congresswoman is now secretary of HUD, mm-hmm. which is a beautiful thing. And so for me to be able to continue my service uh, to my constituents in this way or to have at least have the opportunity to compete to do so is a beautiful thing. I have the courage to ask for more. Mm-hmm. And there are a whole bunch of people suffering in my district, this state, and this nation, and they need leaders like me who have the courage to ask for more. We That's need. right. So what you've seen so right. far with the first 100 days plus with Joe Biden, what what are your thoughts? Moving in the right direction, but when you're moving in the right direction, you got to keep going there. So the COVID mm-hmm. relief bill was something that was definitely needed without a doubt. You know, there are provisions in the COVID relief bill that $1.9 trillion that addresses childhood poverty, which is good. It cuts childhood poverty, by example, in half. Uh, My district, uh, many children are in poverty, and especially in the Cleveland area, almost 40,000 children are living in poverty. So to do that, to cut it in half is good. Mm -hmm. But since we cut it in half, let's just go ahead and go 100 percent and cut it all the way, because that means 50 percent of children are still living in poverty. Uh, More money to state and local governments, really, really good. But we got to keep going. I, the $15 an hour minimum wage did not make it. Uh, they, they blame the, the parliamentarian, just roll, you know, put her under the bus and roll it o- rolled it over her several times. So we got more work that we have to do because beco- before the pandemic, people were catching hell. Mm-hmm. And that hell is only being exacerbated now because of COVID. So we got to have the courage to go beyond, not g- get back to normal, because normal for a whole bunch of people was not good. That's right. right. That's right. right. I didn't ask you how. How are you, Miss Turner? And oh, I, I need an honest you, answer. I need a. Yeah. I need an honest answer because none of us are the same. You yeah. know, because no. because of the pandemic. But how are you? I'm glad you asked me that, and I follow you on the gram, and I love the encouragement that you give people. You know, I got my days like everybody else. Mm-hmm. I have days when I'm up and days when I'm down. Days when I say, "What am I doing?" Mm-hmm. You know, but through it all, you know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. You're blessed, black, and. Highly favorite. Highly favorite. That's right. I keep that mm-hmm. to center me on a regular basis, but I have to meditate and exercise, and I like the box, and I envision a whole bunch of folks on that bag. Or- <laughs> <laughs> and I hula hoop. Angela, yeah, I hula hoop. You hula hoop. got a weighted yeah. hula hoop. I can work that sucker, too. Absolutely. But yeah, oh, use, I have one of those, too. I got to start using that again. I got that, and I got a jump rope. I try to have me all kinds too. of things I got a that I don't use. as well. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But it's, it's hard. I'm going to tell you that. Mm-hmm. It's really hard because, you know, when you're trying to do good, and that doesn't make me perfect, but nobody on, and working on this earth is perfect, you know, you bump up against stuff, and it does. It can weigh you down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me ask you about the pandemic, since you mentioned that, right? And we're talking about the CDC and their new guidelines, and people are very confused. They did a whole SNL skit about it. What are your thoughts on what the CDC is saying? You think it's confusing and too soon for people to not have to wear masks if they've been vaccinated indoors and outdoors? Yes and yes. And the National Nurses United have come out and trust nurses, baby. If you're going to trust anybody, trust the nurses. Mm-hmm. And they said that this is too soon. And that we're putting a lot of frontline essential workers, especially in healthcare, but not exclusively, in danger, mm-hmm. literal danger. Mm-hmm. You know, as of January 2021, over I think 1.3 million people in this country have died from COVID. Now, that was in January. I know the numbers are up, and disproportionately, they have been b- black and brown. Wow. So, yes, Angela, I do think it is too soon, and I am going to link. If I have to choose between the CDC and the nurses, I'm going with team nurses. Absolutely. They said it's too soon. Yeah, because they're on the front lines. They see it, yes. uh, I would think, a little bit more mm-hmm. close and personal than the CDC does. They do. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you know, you know, you talked about, you know, um, just, just having to stay mentally healthy out here. As you're running a campaign, is it easier to focus on the negativity that comes with the campaign or the support? We gravitate towards negativity. Why is that, though? I don't know. It's just me, something me. in our psyche. It messes <laughs> me up. Because so much good is happening. Yes. You know, but yeah, for a moment, and I have to shake myself. 
I try not to, you know, navigate Twitter too much. Lord, if you want to keep your sanity, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> please yep. stay off mm-hmm. Twitter. I mean, just go in there, maybe look at a few things, post a few things. But if you live there, if, that, if that's the world you live in, you kind of start to believe that Twitter is the real world mm-hmm. when it's mm-hmm. really not. So, yes, the negativity does impact, but you have to deliberately kind of pull yourself from that. It's okay to take notice, but you don't want to live there. That's right. right. You know, it's okay right. to peek you through the window. Have your real life. That's You're right. right. Mm-hmm. You don't want to go in. Just mm-hmm. just kind of look. So, yeah, it's, it's hard. But a lot of good things are happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have raised money from every state in this nation, including the District of Columbia Every zip code in the 11th Congressional District in Ohio has donated to this campaign. I've earned endorsements from labor unions like SEIU 1199 or Local 1 to the uh, Amalgamated Transit Union as the bus, you know, the bus drivers Mm -hmm. to postal workers. Today, my endorsement, Sunrise uh, endorsed me to local leaders like the mayor of my city, Mayor Frank Jackson. Wow. And, uh, uh, you know, council people like Councilman Blaine Griffin, state elected officials like Brent, you know, these newcomers, the, the millennials are rocking with Sister Turner, all the way to, to national leaders like Attorney General Keith Ellison. Wow. And so many more. I'm, I I hate the name drop because I'm missing people, but I'm just saying that. And the average donation is $27. You guys remember that, that magic number of $27. And what it says to me is that People across this country believe in me and they believe in my work and right. mission and the ministry that I am on. And that's good. And my family, you know, having a healthy family. That's right. Our health is good. We woke up this morning. That's Somebody's right. That's right. alarm clock went off and they didn't, you know, God had another plan right. this morning. That's right. So, I mean, I call you, I call you one of my leaders because you speak truth to power. And when I hear you speak truth to power, I wonder why is it so hard for politicians to simply tell the truth? Like when you're posed with a question like, is America a racist country? Yeah. Why can't you just speak the truth to power on the history of the country? Why can't we? I mean, the data is very clear. Data and lived experiences. Mm -hmm. The data Mm -hmm. shows that the African-American community in particular is, you know, catching. It's it's Hell, it's traumatic. (laughs) That's right. Right. So from the economy to policing to highway systems. So, yes, racism exists in America. It is prevalent and it is also persistent. I read an article where 67 percent, I think they said doctors, they could have said the medical profession. So forgive me if I don't have that exactly right, but have admitted to having some type of bias against Mm -hmm. the African-American, against Mm African-Americans. Sixty seven percent. And when we look at the maternal rate death you know the death rates of black mothers and childbirth mm-hmm. and even two prominent women in our community like Beyonce and Serena Williams both talked about not being believed during childbirth. And so if it happens to two magnanimous, extraordinarily successful black women, think about other black women who live in the hood and misunderstood. That's right. So it is prevalent and it is persistent but just because that is our reality doesn't mean it has to be our future. Mm-hmm. So we got to do a new thing on purpose, just as racism, anti-blackness and white supremacy is on purpose. Let's let's talk a little bit, if we can, about Black Wall Street. Mm-hmm. The massacre. It's been 100 right. years. May 31st, it will be 100 years. Right. And Mother Fletcher, who's still alive, she's 107 years old. What are we going to do for her while she's still alive and her descendants and the descendants of others? where a white mob came into the Greenwood area and burned down businesses and residences and killed black people. And they were deputized by people in elected office. So, yes, Mm -hmm. racism is alive and well in America. Again, it is our reality now. It doesn't have to be our future. So why is it hard for politicians just to tell the truth and and say that? I have no idea. You know, we got to tell the good, the bad and the ugly. That's right. I was going to ask, you know, why why do you think people, you know, should— trust and believe in politicians. Like when you see Kamala Harris that said there is no racist country and everybody switch sides once they get into office. You know what I mean? You see it all the time. So why should people agree with, you know, even listen to politicians? Because it all sounds like car salespeople. They tell you what they need to get to to buy the car. And then once you have the car, you're on your own. Yeah, it's not just, I mean, DJ, it's not just politicians. I mean, I think we put politicians and preachers on pedestals. I Mm had to throw the preachers in there. But... (laughs) My preacher friend's going to say, why you put us in this? But no, (laughs) nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you're in politics, you just kind of get caught up about, you know, am I going to be reelected? What is this group or that group going to think? 
When for me, I just think it's best to be authentic and just tell the truth. And if people are going to not support you because you are telling the truth, then that says more about them than it does about you. And something on the magnitude of racism. I mean, we got the lived experiences, not just the data of things that have happened to our ancestors. You want to talk about 100 years of of uh, black Wall Street. Well, 1619 to 2019 was 100 years since the first Africans were brought to this country by force. Mm-hmm. Those things are real. And so we don't just have to talk about the past, even though I firmly believe that we cannot forget. You know, James Baldwin said, know from whence you came. That's right. If you know from whence you came, there's virtually nowhere that you cannot go. But let's talk about some 21st century stuff. Black people lost half half of our wealth in during the Great Recession of 2008 that started in 2008 because that wealth is rooted in housing. 50%. Mm-hmm. So what are we going to do as a nation? It's not just enough to recognize that. What are we going to do about it? Over 40% of black businesses have gone out of business so far because of COVID. So the data doesn't lie, Mm -hmm. and our lived experiences don't lie either. Just tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Shame the white devil. Some information. I want to know what you said. Your phone breaking up you. Your phone breaking up you. I'm going to ask uh, Senator Turner a question while she's resetting. How, how would your role as Congresswoman be different than what you were doing as Senator? You know what? It's kind of, it's somewhat the same, mm-hmm. Char. It is. It's service of people. That certainly the territory that I would represent would increase. Mm-hmm. Uh, half of my Senate district is part of the 11th Congressional District, and it is portions of greater Cleveland and also greater Akron. I can't leave out my Akron folks. Mm-hmm. And so, but the service is the same, standing up, wanting to change people's material conditions, caring what other people eat, what type of jobs that they have, you know, what kind of communities are they living in. And I would also say, now it's not just a state focus. When you are in Congress, you have both a national, you know, you have a, your district, you have mm-hmm. a state, national, and then also international. But my opportunity agenda is still the same, just really fighting and pushing for the people. Could, could you expound on that a little bit? How, how does, like, having a congressional seat in Ohio impact America? Yeah, because when you take a vote in Congress, it is very rare that you— are voting for just things that impact your district. Mm -hmm. You are voting for things that impact the entire nation, and in some cases, depending on what it is, the world. And let's take health care, for example. That is something that I believe that the residents of my district need. As you all know, I've been on the front lines of that for a very long time. But it's not just my district and my state. It's the United States of America needs that. So that's just one example. Education policy, policing. You know, we know we got Mm -hmm. the uh, George Floyd Policing Act and the the Congressman John Lewis Voting Rights Act. So all of those things, those are a couple of examples of many that you are not just focused in on your district. You're focused in on the state that you are elected from, too, and also the nation and, in many cases, the world. Why, why aren't Democrats raising more hell about, you know, the, these bills that are coming out that are simply trying to take the vote away from black people? Like, why are they acting like that's just a cool, common occurrence, as if that won't impact elections 2022, 2024 for years to come? That's right. I ha- And some are, but I think our collective hair needs to be on fire because we have— politicians and state legislatures trying to take us back. It happened in my state legislature when I was there, and it's happening now. You know, experts are saying that Ohio's law, uh, a bill that's pending right now, is worse. Is going to be worse than Georgia's. They want two IDs. They want to limit the drop boxes, yeah, et how, how are they doing this? I'm, I'm confused. A Florida, Georgia, like, how are yes. they doing this now and people are allowing it? Because, I mean, the, the levers of power, it does matter who we elect. And I think although Congress, you know, we should pay attention to Congress, we should pay attention to who we elect to be president, but state legislatures matter too. And we have taken our eye collectively, not just in the political world, but also just the everyday world, because people are in a state of survival. And I believe that when people are in a state of survival, they cannot go beyond that mm. to focus in on the thing, the very things that will impact whether they get from survival to thrive. Mm. So that means now we need we depend on the political class to really mm. care and to do something. And collectively, we have taken our eyes off of state legislatures. There are 361 bills percolating through, st- to, through state legislatures right now in about 47 states mm. that will upend what will happen, as you said, Shar, not just in 2022, but beyond. And so we have to re. Focus. Why can't we care about the Congress and the presidency and also state legislatures? They're being controlled 
by these right wing Republicans who, because they can't flat out win because the dynamics of this country is changing. That's right. The demographics are changing. They flat out cheat. And that's now you exactly said two IDs. Doing. You said they're yeah, requiring yeah, two pending. IDs. Yeah, DJ. Now it's pending. It hasn't passed. But yeah, in Ohio, two IDs. They want to take away the drop boxes or limit the hours. For example, so if the Board of Elections is open from 830 to 430, for example, mm -hmm. they want the drop boxes mm -hmm. to only be available from 830 to 430. That defeats the purpose of of having the box. So again, our fundamental rights are being assaulted and we need to help our people connect the dots. And that's why I'm so glad that you all on The Breakfast Club, you have these conversations because these things are not going to change just because politicians say so. Mm -hmm. They're going to change right. because the people say so. That's right. You know, I, I've noticed a lot of people, um, especially online, they get upset when they hear uh, people saying that Joe Biden actually has gotten things done in the first hundred days because they don't feel like anything has been done specifically for black people. What, what, what do you say to that? Yeah, things are being done from a global perspective. See, both of these things can be true. Mm -hmm. It can be true that things are being done within the 100 days. But, and, and also think about it. It's just 100 days. Somebody, somebody, some, you know, smart person thought, oh, let's judge it by 100 days. Well, we got 100 days. We're going to have 100 more and 100 more and 100 mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Let's measure that based on the days to come and not just the one, the 100 days. But absolutely, the African-American community deserves directly some stuff to happen for us because African-Americans overwhelmingly did this. Oh, 100%. Did it. And also in Georgia, too, because Democrats would not have control of, Georgia, of, of the U.S. Senate without rocking Georgia and rocking it hard. So, yeah, so just because... At 100 days, there are another 100 days. Let's make our demands and put them out on the table. Mm -hmm. But African-Americans right. definitely deserve, and I believe that we deserve reparations. Mm -hmm. I have, I, I, I penned an op-ed with our dear sister, Erica Alexander. Erica! Yes, who I call Erica. Alex the Great. That's my <laughs> nickname for her. And we wrote an op-ed that was in the USA Today about a month and a half ago that talked about the different forms that reparation, repair, repayment of a damage that mm -hmm. has been done to... Uh, it's in, uh, American descendants of slaves. That that has to happen, and that is a direct paycheck and some other things that pro programmatically can be done. Yeah, I read well, that. Well, is back. I think he had a question. Yee, Ye, you back? Ye? Oh, she's okay. not back. Yeah, I read she's that article. Back. Salute to Erica. She has, she's got a great podcast, uh, The Big does. Payback. Yes, she with Whitney, Whitney Dow, which is all about reparations. That's happens right. to be on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. Just happens to be. Yeah, like place. I am. Just like Nina Turner, hello, hello somebody. Hello somebody. And, you know, just happens to be. But but what is, what is the importance of, of, of voting in local elections for people who may not know? The election that is closest to the people has the most direct impact. Mm. So, you know, who your mayor is, the city council, even on the state level. The state level, for example, controls educational funding in a great to a greater degree than the, the federal government. So it absolutely matters how the police departments are ran. Mm -hmm. That's right. local. Mm -hmm. Schools, state and local. Mm -hmm. Matter. I think he's back now. There go you. Okay, I am. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes, yes. ma'am. A little bit. Okay. Now, my question was about Liz Cheney and your thoughts about her being ousted from her position and her speaking out now, because I know people are still critical of Liz Cheney because of her past. But what are your thoughts on people now coming around and saying, OK, this is dangerous, even though they were pro-Trump previously? Yeah, if, if people are having an awakening, good. We want people. I mean, part of the goal should be to be on a path of creating better. So if people were in the wrong position before, we should give people room to grow and to and to think differently. And so I do agree that the Republicans are really showing that they are flat out just lost it. And they're penalizing her for standing up to a president that was a neo-fascist. And she's speaking out in different in ways that she probably would not have two years ago or even four years ago. And I think we certainly should embrace that. At the same time, we can recognize that she was wrong on some stuff, too. Again, these things are not diametrically opposed. Both things can be true at once. Yeah, I don't think she would be doing it if he was still in power, though. Yeah, she might not be. I mean, you're mm -hmm. right. I mean, sometimes people get courage in different ways mm -hmm. or get a backbone in different ways. And that you, you probably are right about that. She and she helped create that too. monster. She, she did. But you know what? In the black per church at the end, when the pastor calls the altar call, come. 
all ye who are willing, we all get an opportunity to repent. That is true. And hopefully she's in a repentant moment in her life and also in her career. And we'll see if it continues, whether it's just for this moment or whether it will continue. Why does it seem like Republicans are more sincere with their lies than Democrats are about their truth? Ooh, Republicans are shameless, though. Some of them. I don't want to lump them all, but especially on the federal level and mm-hmm. the state level, too. I think locally it just depends, you know, what what's going on. But they are very resilient in uh, what they push for, and they are not ashamed to push for it. They go all in yes. all the time. And Democrats don't necessarily do that. And we got to start to do that. I don't get it. Yeah. Like, why are we always compromising? I have no idea, especially when, you know, you don't start a negotiation with the compromising position. You start mm-hmm. from what, what you really want and then maybe you'll get there. Mm-hmm. But uh, we, we just definitely have to be bold, especially because the American people gave the Democratic Party, my my party, the levers of power, the presidency, the U.S. Senate, and help Democrats maintain the House of Representatives. So that, to me, is a memo. Go bold. Go big. Mm-hmm. Change material conditions in people's lives. Is, is, you think Biden's not bold enough right now? I, in some ways, you know, he's he's getting there. Again, I believe he's going in the right direction. I'll give you an example, Angela. Now, there are governors and in states, including mine, who have decided that they want to cut the unemployment benefits because, oh, Poor people don't want to go work at jobs that's not paying them enough money or do- doesn't allow them to be able to afford child care. If, for example, if they have children and these governors are just saying, you know, we're going to force people to go back, go back to work, to jobs mm-hmm. that don't fulfill them, edify them economically or any other way. Now, we need the president to come out and go ham on these people because it is a travesty that anybody would talk about poor people in that way and just assume that people are getting so much enrichment that they don't want to go back to work. And that reminds me of Ronald Reagan's, um, man, what did he used to call black people back in the, the day? The welfare mother. Yes. Welfare queen yes. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, As yeah, if, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know about you all, but I've never met anybody who said, you know what, this poor life is all comfy. I'm, I'm glad to be <laughs> in, in food else. insecure. <laughs> Nobody else. You real. know? Um, and then even as far as who was receiving welfare, right, it wasn't necessarily that it was black women. That's right. That were getting rich off of welfare. Even statistically, that's not who was who was the highest uh, people getting welfare. That's it. L- listen, so never let the truth get in the way of a good story. No, it was mainly <laughs> our white sisters and brothers. And that's okay. People got needs. They got needs. I mean, remember, Dr. King, before mm-hmm. he was assassinated, it was the poor people's movement. That's right. People's plural of all identities. And we have Dr. William Barber, who's carrying on that tradition. That's right. In the 80s, Reverend Jackson came with the Rainbow Coalition. That means all of God's children from all identities banding together mm-hmm. who are poor, a working poor in the barely middle class to say that we need a new thing. So, yeah, poor ain't nobody you, jumping up. Being poor is hard. It kills you. That's right. It can kill you. That's Do right. you think you could be an activist and a politician at the same time, effectively? Ooh, we gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Angela, that is such a good question because I'm trying to wrap my mind around. You know, in college, I was an activist. I didn't necessarily consider myself an activist, but I think by today's standards, based on the work that I did, I would be considered an activist. And then I went into politics, and then I got my activism groove back on uh, for the last six, seven years. And now it's my goal to get back into the active elected ministry. And we will see. I think sometimes those things do collide mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at times. Mm-hmm. But that's no different than other things that collide. Right. I want to ask you about the uh, George Floyd Policing Act. Is it is it worth passing if qualified immunity is not abolished? Like, is that something that Democrats should compromise on? We need quali- qualified immunity must go. Mm-hmm. And so in some ways, part of me wants to say, yes, pass it. And then well, break that on. down for people that don't know what qualified immunity is. I'm sure there's people listening. But like, what does that mean? Yeah, that not only police, but we're focusing in on police, but the framing that if you are are a government official and, and especially in law enforcement, that you you're not you're held to a different standard. You get to get away with your wrong. You're not right. judged in the same way as a civilian would if something happens that is tragic and i.e. Uh, shooting an unarmed person. It is a perfect. A protection that is given particularly to law enforcement that protects bad police officers. 
and we have to do something about it. You know, Ben Cohen of Ben and Jerry's, one of the founders, and also our dear brother, uh, Michael Render, a.k.a. Killer Mike, mm-hmm. have written a book about how qualified immunity allows bad police officers to get off the hook. That you're just protected no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. There's no judgment or consequences. You just let off mm-hmm. by virtue of your profession. And that is not right. So, Char, you asked me, I mean, part of me says pass it and and work on qualified immunity on the other end. But another side of me says if we don't make that demand right now and get it into the bill, the likelihood that it is ever going to be abolished is less than it, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I do believe that we got to think very deeply and clearly about this, about whether or not we want to go all the way right this moment. I say go all the way. I mean, my my leaning is to say, no, qualified immunity must be part of that. I've heard them say they want to limit qualified immunity. I don't even know what that means. Right. How you going? You can't be half measure. We already see what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. If we're going to do this, just do it all the way. Mm-hmm. Don't limit it. Do the right. Yeah, I, I don't understand why. Mm-hmm. What's what's the problem? Do it. Yeah, because I don't want them to do no symbolic, you know, we got the bill passed on the anniversary of George Floyd. That's right. And that's all it is. It's, it's symbolic. Like yes. what is in it that's going to actually stop police tea? from killing us? Yeah. No. We we but we gotta go all the way. But I'm just saying I, I know how some people might say, Well, just get what we can get. Well, we've been taking what we can That's right. <laughs> you know, it's time to make a demand and that's again, I'm running on the courage to ask for more and black people need this and this nation needs this too. And when you have bad police officers or just bad systems, it is bad for the people who work in those professions and it makes law enforcement less safe when there's no trust and no accountability. We got to, and we need more people in law enforcement who actually work in law enforcement to call out their own. That's right. That's right. So, so now, uh, last mm-hmm. week we had a conversation about gun control also, and I wanted to get your thoughts on that, where you were talking about Texas and how now you don't have to get like a mental health check, a, a lot of things that you don't have to do. You just have to be a certain age and you can go and purchase a gun. What are your thoughts on those restrictions, less restrictions? Yeah, it's insanity. I mean, we got to have some balances, some measures, some rules. I mean, even when you get a car, the car has to be registered. You got to take a test to get a driver's license. They can track us mm-hmm. uh, based on that driver's license. And when I say track, I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. So why doesn't that qualify? Why, why uh, owning a weapon uh, should be even more so? Because it is a weapon and it can do a whole lot of harm. And those who are responsible going on owners should join in the movement to make sure that guns are not in the hands of people that shouldn't be. Can you can you imagine the activist community and also uh, legal go- gun owners coming together to fight for gun sense laws? Word, be word. a beautiful thing. Gun sense. Yeah. I think we should. I think they should do some type of. Uh, and this is gonna sound crazy, but every year or every couple of years, they should retrain. I mean, you have to do it with your license. That's right. You have right. to do it with all these other things. So why not something that gives you power to take somebody's life to make sure that their mental is okay? Yeah, I agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Simple. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) You know, we own a lot of stations in Ohio. So for people listening, you know, what, what is, what is, what is Nina Turner's immediate agenda for the people in Ohio? First of all, equity within the COVID relief um, to make sure that people are able to not just be in survival mode, but also can thrive. I do believe that we should be giving $2,000 right now a month to people. That $1,400, while it was good-ish, it was already spent. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, the electric bill was due, the gas bill was due, the car note was due, groceries due, all of that stuff. It was spent. And uh, we're not out of the woods yet. And I think people don't get that. See, my proximity to pain is fully intact. That's right. You know, I was a part of the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class. I understand what it feels like to be food insecure or how we would say it in my neighborhood, just flat out hungry, just did not have enough food to eat. And so we got to do something about that. I was reading an article this morning. It came out from the Dayton Daily News in Ohio where the fastest growing jobs in Ohio from now through 2028 are jobs that pay less than $15 an hour. Food worker. I mean, retail workers. The fastest growing jobs. And so just think about the economic inequality that is being that is breeding through those data points. And then we got people who want to play games with, 
increasing the minimum ma- minimum wage to $15 an hour, which is the floor and not the ceiling. So to me, it is making sure that people have what they need. Need is important. And why is it that we believe that poor people shouldn't be able to smell the roses or the tulips every now and then, buy right. a certified used car every now and then, be able to take right. a vacation even if it's within the United States of America? We have a paradigm in this country that if you are poor, your life don't matter. Yeah. You 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 should be, work two and three and four jobs, string all those jobs together. And if you have children, you might not have time to spend with them. And you, so I mean, you talk a lot about the mentals. If you are always on like that just to survive, when do you get a time for you? All of these things make you and others better. When you're better, you fit the puzzle mm-hmm. of humanity. And right. then you're, you're able to make everything else in and around you better. What about the quality of life? So I am fighting for a quality of life. It's an opportunity agenda that includes Medicare for all, increasing the minimum wage, canceling student debt, by the way, which is a racial justice issue, too, because black women carry the largest amount of student debt. Hello, somebody Mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. I want people to live. You know, I come from a faith tradition that says that I came that you might have life. That's Jesus talking. Oof. And that you might have that life more abundantly. That's why Sister Turner is running. Or in the words of Congresswoman Barbara Jordan, what the people want is simple. They want an America as good as it's promised. I got the courage to ask for more. Yeah, I can't. I don't understand why there's any poor people in America. I know. And the working poor. How does that? Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. In a country when a guy can have $160 billion. Or even just the money we spend in taxes. I feel like the money we spend in taxes per year should be able to keep people, you know, with 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 something in their pocket where they can just live. but That's you know what's exactly foul about right. that is is you look at it, right? You see all these rich companies and rich people paying $750 for taxes. You see paying no tax. But right. then you look at a, a middle class person and you're saying they're paying 30%, 25%. And mm-hmm. that doesn't make sense. Like, where's the fairness? And how do you expect a minority to ever catch up when you're not taxing the rich or, or, or they're getting through loopholes like crazy? That's right. And people that's trying to struggle and trying to be the first time earners in their family can't can't get a break at all. I mean, DJ, you hit on a point. There's an organization called Patriotic Millionaires that I want the, the, the Breakfast Club family to check them out. And what they are, a group of millionaires who are saying, tax us, please, <laughs> because the system is rotten to the core. It is wrong. And you're right. I mean, there's some corporations like Amazon and Walmart. These companies play, pay zero in federal zero. taxes. That's crazy. But you let you you let you or I somebody be late. They gonna even if you get a payment plan is 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 uh, ripe with uh, with uh, um, with uh, interest and penalties. Mm-hmm. Right. So much so you never you can never uh, get out of it. Three men in this country have more wealth. Three white men Mm -hmm. in this country. If they were black men, I would say it too, or women. Three white men control more wealth than 160 million people combined. That's insane. And that's Gates, that's Bezos, and that's Zuckerberg. More wealth than 160 million people combined. What does that say? It says that this system, this is systemic. So systemic problems require systemic solutions. It is rotten. I feel as though we're back in the in the gilded age mm-hmm. where wealth was run amok and the gulf between the poor and those who had everything was wide. We are right back at that moment right now. But guess what happened after the gilded age? What happened? The progressive movement. Okay. And that's what we're doing right now, baby. Moving to make some progress with the 21st century version that has racial justice weaved into it too absolutely well, how, how can people donate to your campaign please family breakfast club family sister turner needs you you can go to nina turner.com that is nina turner.com time talent treasure you can make phone calls or text bank from your home from the comfort of your own state you can do that you can donate as i said the average donation is 27 dollars. we'll take three dollars we'll take a dollar it all adds up because my campaign or this campaign i want to say our campaign because it's a people power campaign and because of the, the the level of grassroots donations we are receiving, the only special interest I'll have to answer to is the people. The people. There you I, go. Yeah, I don't need to send it to Nina Turner. Yes, you did, I mean, I, Charlamagne. I don't, I don't, Thank I don't know you. much about politics, but I know good people. And sending it to Nina Turner is absolutely a great human. Thank you. Absolutely. So are you and you, DJ, and you, Angela, too. And I just appreciate the love. I do feel very much a part of the Breakfast Club family. I love you guys. We and appreciate you. Are. you.
Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you. It's Senate. I'm going to make my donation right now while I'm, while I'm sitting oh, here. Oh, the election. So the election day is August the 3rd. Early vote begins on July the 7th. July 7th. Yes, early okay. vote. Absolutely. Okay. So you can start early voting now for Senator Nina Turner. And make sure you subscribe to the Hello Somebody podcast please. on the Black Effect, Black Effect. iHeart Radio podcast network to get, get this free jewelry in your life every week, please. Get that. There's That's no right. effect like the Black Effect, baby. Many people attempt it, but Black. Hey. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, it's Senator Nina Turner. It's the Breakfast Club. Thank you. Good morning. 